Hello everyone, I'm Steve, Mark's working late tonight, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back, and happy Thursday. We're getting there. The weekend's almost here. So you can see I'm shabbily dressed. I just got home from work myself. I was in the office today. Um, half office, half on the road. Most of the time I work from home, but the few days a week that I end up going into the office, I usually travel. So I was in the office for like an hour and a half, and then drove in the middle of nowhere to meet with people recovery stuff, mental health stuff, and then run back to the office. Then I had a meeting because I'm doing a training next week that's eight hours split over two days, and it's going to be people on Facebook, or not Facebook, people on Zoom, and then people in person, and we're going to see if I can be charming in, in a couple different levels, and we'll find out. So, story time? Story time. Um... The story is today, but it flashes me back. One of the things I was thinking about getting out of bed today was, God, I hate my life, and I wish I could go back to bed. Um, that's something that happens a number of days out of the year for me. It's nothing, I'm not dangerous, you know, to myself or anybody else, but it's that down feeling. It's, I want to get back in bed. I don't want to do this today. I don't want to do this any day. Um, when a momentary deep swing of depression like that hits me in the morning, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything at all. I usually try to fight that by getting everything done the night before, so in the morning I can just mindlessly grab coffee and keys and my cell phone and something to wear and then get out the door. So small victories today. A couple. Um, I don't want to go to work. Who does? Uh, but I really didn't want to go into the office. I'm actually quite happy working from home. If I find out they're happy, great. Um, but I got up. I had my coffee, went into the bedroom after I'd already been up, sat on my side of the bed and stared at the floor and had two or three cigarettes and contemplated life. What is this? What is my job? What am I doing? We should move. Why is that one cat outside? Like all these questions of, of things going on. Why do I even go to this job? I hate working. Why don't... I'm just mumbling to myself. So... I did the first thing I could do. I put socks on. It was monumental. It was a monumental victory to get socks on this morning. Then we had to get to pants. Um, I haven't left the house in a little while, and I don't wear dress clothes most of the time. At home, I try to stay comfortable. And when I'm out, I tend to wear something dressy but comfortable. <laughs> and putting on actual clothes with buttons and zippers is was different. And of course, they don't fit as well because I gained some weight. So it's a little discouraging. So it was just an I big whiny baby morning kind of thing. M mirror that with, you know, my normal kind of petulance and babyishness, and then put that together with some real organic mental health stuff. We got the socks on. It was a big deal. Mark offered to give me a ride to work because he works at nine also. I said, no, I'll walk. It's fine. Because uh, I only live like 10 minutes away from where I work. And I got to the shoes. Now, the shoes I've talked about before, and I'm not saying poor me, because these are very small things. Very small things. But they're big victories to me, because without these small things, my ass isn't getting out the door. Okay? It's not even getting to the mailbox. Nothing. So I sit, Mark's gone, and I get one shoe on, and I'm staring, still contemplating life, still contemplating running away and driving an RV, and and living separately from the rest of the world. Mark can come. And then I put on the other shoe. Now, there was a setback getting there, because I'm going to the office. I have to bring all my electronics, so I have, like, 14,000 pieces of machinery that are coming with me with all their cords. And I get there, and because our office styles have been arranged, I share an office with another person. And I don't usually... He's, like, in there every day, uh, so I use whatever office is open. <sighs> And then I had to travel today. So, gearing up for everything today was kind of a, oh god, why do I have to do... Whiny. I was very whiny for the most of the morning, and I'm trying to get off the tail end of it now, if you'll indulge me. Everything was a monumental task. Getting dressed. Getting out the door. By the way, I was five minutes late for work, because that small incline seems to have gotten a lot steeper over the last year. There's a little hill that I have to go up. And then I had to get a car from the agency because I had to travel and had to go up an extra flight of stairs. And I can't breathe very well with the mask on going up the stairs. I mean, I don't need to. Our precautions at work are pretty limited. You have to have a mask on in the hallways. 
And if you're going to leave your office door open, put it on. But if you're going to close your door a little bit of a way, you can take it off. They're not super strict about it. Wear a mask. That's about it. And social distancing, depending on what staff member you're talking to, is kind of a big deal. So I traveled, and I went into the rural hinterlands to go for my noon meeting. And it's like, it's such a different place than, Scranton's barely a city. But in that part of the area that I'm in, it's the next county over, you would think, one, we had a different president right now. And two, that you never needed anything like a mask or a vaccine to get by. Because all of this has just seemed to never happen, I guess. So it's very different living in that area. Met the new person who was working at the place I was supposed to go. I don't think she liked me, but oh well. Um, came back to the office, met with another staff member because I'm training next week, and she was telling me some awful stuff that's been going on with her at work. So this all started with getting my socks on, the small victory. Now, how is it a victory if I bitched and moaned and felt insecure and felt inferior and felt depressed and felt like everything was a chore and, and all that stuff? How does that even look like victory. Um, the alternative was to stay in bed and just do nothing. Um, that builds on itself. <laughs> Staying in bed and doing nothing for too many days in a row, I, I've never found helpful to me. It's a fine line between self-care and self-indulgence, and some of us tow it. <laughs> My toe's been on that line. So, Bed sounded like rest, but it was really just running away from a very busy day I didn't want to have to go through. So, the victory was pushing my lazy ass out the door. My scared, li not just lazy, lazy is one word for it. I was anxious about driving. Um, I was anxious about seeing people at work. I hadn't been there in like a, a couple weeks. I was anxious about driving in bad weather. It was raining a little bit. But everything got done. Everything got done. I almost filmed this video on my lunch break. I did, but on my phone, I don't have enough memory. I don't have enough memory on my phone to film. So I was feeling, you know, quite active by noon because my noon meeting ran short. And I thought, great, I can film in the car. And I look at my phone and I can film an eight-minute video. I'm like, camera. And, and no pictures and my phone quality is crap. People often compliment Mark and I on our skin. And I'm like, you don't understand. Just use an old camera. You don't need filters. That rosacea... It's gone. You don't even see it. You won't even see it. So today I got through the whole day. That's, that's kind of a big deal. There could have been snafus at any point. I think I could have quit today at any point. I'm not asking for applause, but I don't think it's only me that that kind of thing happens to. Um, and I don't think it's exclusive to people with mental health problems. Anybody on a bad day has to push themselves sometimes harder than others. And pushing myself when my internal monologue sounds like a screaming toddler is not as easy. Um, but it all started with just putting my socks on. And that thing led to the shoes. And the shoes led to getting out the door. And then, I mean, obviously clothes. Um, getting out the door. And getting out the door meant the office. And then the travel. And then that. And then home. And so now we get to hang out for a little bit. Mark will be home in probably about an hour I'm thinking Uber Eats, because we didn't get it last weekend, and I'm hungry and I don't want to cook. Uh, and I'm going to have to edit this video myself, so if it's bad already, don't blame Mark. <laughs> if it's not good, it's me who did the editing, okay? So why is that a big deal? Small victories are just that. I found in recovery, my mental health and substance use recovery, that small steps are all, uh, is everything. Everything is a series of small steps, from what I've found. Itty bitty little things that sort of seem to have nothing to do with each other that all kind of pile on top. Um, little steps. I had work today. I don't know if I told you guys how I got my job. Uh, I don't talk about um, specifics because it's YouTube, but I do work in mental health. And primarily I work, I have a mental health diagnosis, I have bipolar, and usually I work with other people who are looking towards recovery, working on their own selves with whatever mental health diagnosis or emotional trouble they're going through, trauma, whatever it is. And I'm not a therapist, but I have some experiences of my own, and it's to walk alongside somebody and work with them until they can do things on their own. And I like that part of my job. It's, it's the cool part. Um, it is kind of mentally draining at many points. 
many, many points. But that's that's human services. That's that's kind of how it goes. So doing that kind of work is is fun for me now. I didn't think I'd fall into it. The way I found this place, okay, let's take you back to Stephen being on parole. Okay? I'm on parole. For intoxicated driving while intoxicated in 2008, and I was on parole for the crime in 2009 till 2014. So in the beginning of 2012, I was starting to get sober. I told you guys that's the year things kind of started to change. That was when recovery started to, to happen. Um, I needed a place to volunteer because I was approved for disability on the first try with no lawyer, if that tells you how sketchy things were in my mind. And I needed a place to volunteer because I was in the system and they said if you don't find a place to volunteer, you're going to be picking up trash on the side of the road with the other people who either can't get a job or volunteer. As I'm on disability, I was not able to work, not just because I was on disability, but because my condition was disabling. I wasn't able to hold a job at the time. I went through the state psychiatrist, they rung me out, and at the end of it, I had disability, and I was on it for about two years. So with no motivation to work necessarily, and only the courts pushing me to volunteer, I went up to this place, knocked on the door. Said, hi, you guys looking for any volunteers? I'd be interested. Somehow that turned into me sitting in somebody's office who was hiring for a small part-time job. I had no idea how much money I could or couldn't make on disability. I didn't know how many hours they were wanting. I, so it turned into a very, very small part-time job. I was working like two days a month and then doing some work by telephone. Um, and it was very much under what I could have made. And it was very much my kind of work because it was two days a month. It wasn't pushing anything. And it was phone work. I could do it at my own pace. So that's how that started. Then I went and got certified to be a peer specialist, which meant I have some more opportunities at work, rather than someone who just has a mental illness and comes around sometimes. Um, that led to that. Then I've been there for six or seven years. So I've developed more skills, I've gotten more trainings, more certifications. I train more people because I've had training myself to do it. And that's, I just fell ass backwards into it. And it was all just... That day, I took a deep breath and said, let me just knock on the door. What'll happen? What are they going to do? Say, run away? Hit me in the nose with a newspaper? Like, what's the worst they could do? And that little tiny one thing changed the direction of everything after. It was after I started taking that little risk and putting myself out there that the job turned part-time then full-time. That's when I think I had a, felt like I had a little more to offer in my relationship. So I then started putting the moves on Mark. <laughs> More than just carrying the torch and dying inside. I think I actually asked him out. And I felt like I was more confident. I ended up getting a vehicle at one point, And I had my license back, even though my driving record was shit. It's been long enough now that I don't have any points on my license. It's, it's good. My insurance is not astronomical anymore. And all of these things were just one tiny little action that set off this huge chain of events. Um... That one, a simple knock on a business's door, led to me having a career at this point. In a field that I did not go to school for, I went to the hospital and rehab for. So, so it goes. I could have done without that. I promise, if there is a God, I promise I would have helped out people with mental health issues and substance use disorders, even if I wasn't one myself. So maybe in the next life I could do the same kind of work, but not have to get dragged through it. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Um, because I know plenty of way, like, sage, wise people who have a lot of life experience and share it with others, and a lot of them didn't have to go crazy or drunk to get that experience. So, those are my role models, not the ones of us who've dragged ourselves through the mud and then back, um, necessarily. While we've seen the grit and we've seen how difficult things can be and often make it difficult for ourselves, which means... When you make your own mess, you have to clean up your own mess. Sometimes people stay around to help. Sometimes people do. I had my parents around the whole time to help. And Mark was around, actually, towards the end of the uh, substance use and then going into recovery. So, little baby things. Say hi to the new guy. What's his name? Mark. And there we go. It's so 
curious to me as I'm looking back, because I'm almost 40, so now I have life to look back on. It's been 20 years since I've been in college. A lot of adult life has passed. Unfortunately, I lost most of my 20s to treatment, drinking, bad decisions, all that stuff. I had to kind of start over again at 30, like I had just finished college. So I had about seven, eight years to make up. Now it's been about that seven, eight years, and I feel like I'm kind of, now I can pick up, not where I left off, but I can kind of get back into the swing of life. I can save for adult things like a home or a wedding or a new place or a bigger TV or put more money in my IRA or into my 403B, you know, save for a future because it looks like now there might be one. Uh, that wasn't always so certain before. So, so the little things. I am grateful today for the little things because they seem like nothing. They seem like no measurable accomplishment. And I've seen it in other people's lives, too, that I've worked with. They'll come in and say, Ugh, it was all I could do to get out of bed today. And maybe they smell. And maybe they haven't shaven. And maybe they don't look so hot. And maybe they're a little shaky. But they got out of bed. They dragged their ass out of bed to somewhere else to talk to somebody. That's a big deal. All of it's relative when you're dealing with growth from a place of, like, rock bottom. You know, a lot of folks don't walk right out of rehab into medical school and then become a doctor. I actually know a guy who did. He's phenomenal. He's in critical care um, and emergency medicine. But that's not most of us. Most of us go back to our lives and try to make sense of what's left over and see if we can start over and see who's left to do it with. Um, I was fortunate to have a lot of people around me at the time who were available to help me start over. And... I was so discouraged when I started that these little positive things were very much to be dismissed because it's like, oh, what a small victory. Oh, great. I got up at 8 every day this week. I hadn't seen 8 a.m. in a very long time before that, except in jail, because you got to eat and you got to stay awake. And from that, a whole life developed from all these little decisions, these little choices I made, these little... Um, victories that came along the way that were more of a woohoo than a big screaming match. The little woohoos, they add up. They all add up. And then suddenly there's a life going on. And it was mine. And it was a life worth living. Never thought I'd have one of those. So, so I put it out there to you guys. Leave in your comments below. What was a small victory you've had this week? We'll say this week. It's been long. Was it something that is meaningful to you, that you're worried might not be meaningful to somebody else. I just told you straight up, putting on my socks today was the biggest accomplishment I did. Um, because without that, we wouldn't be sitting here without that. Without that, I would have stayed in bed, felt like garbage, called out of work, slept till noon, hung around, watched shitty Chantal recaps. <laughs> the recaps aren't shitty, it's just shitty because it's about Chantal. And sat around all day, feeling guilty, texting Mark at work, feeling more guilty because I'm such a lame ass because I didn't go to work and I stayed home and boo-hooed myself. And, you know, that's what the day would have been like if I didn't get my ass up and get going. But I did. Pushed myself a little and I was able to get through the whole thing. I'm kind of, um, almost proud that the day is done. So tell me what you're proud of this week. What's an accomplishment you had that you want to show off? And you and no one here is going to laugh in your face and say, that's ridiculous, that's too small of an accomplishment to even mention. Not here. Mm -mm, we don't do that here. So if you need a cheerleader, if you need a little support, if you just want to share a good thing that happened this week, if you want to share a small victory, those are good with weight loss too, like non-scale victories. They're pretty cool. Like when your thighs don't rub together anymore, you can't see that on scale, but that's a victory. You got to say. So anything across the spectrum that's been going good. You got a negative COVID test. Things are going good at work. Uh, your kid said it's first word. Um, you're a grandmother now. Anything along those lines, feel free to share. If you just got your socks on today and made it to the desk or made it to your phone to watch me, that counts too. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I'm going to edit this video. I promise nothing, okay? So thank you for watching. Thank you all for being here with me on a Thursday. Please do subscribe. I'm going to go get all these clothes off and get a shower and sit and have some me time before Mark gets home. Please hit the notification bell on your way out so you get alerts when we have new videos and when we go live. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. 
Our email address and our contact information is listed below as well. We're doing a Christmas card exchange. So if you are interested, our P.O. box is listed below in the description. Um, you know, send us one, we'll send you one, of course. And if you don't want to send one, but you just want a card, just send us your address. We'll send you one anyway. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and we will catch up with you, I believe, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. I believe we're really going to catch up with you tomorrow, too. Thank you all for watching. Be good to yourselves. Be well, and we'll talk to you then. Bye.